Hey everyone, it's Lisa here. Um, I'm back for another fake live session. <laughs> um, yeah, so this time I'm going to tackle a more serious question about um, selling artwork online, basically what I do. Um, and, and I know a lot of you struggle with this, so I thought it would be a good idea to spend a little bit of time on it. Um, so Berna asks, how long after you joined all the platforms did you start getting a decent following in sales? And she writes, I'm finding it hard to power through this initial bit of doing tons of work on social and illustration, but not really seeing any results yet. How did you cope with this? Okay, so that's a great question. Um, okay, there's good news and bad news. Okay, so the thing is, I... Okay, so I started doing what I, you know, selling online, um, probably at the beginning phase of the whole boom. Obviously, that gives you a bit more of advantage because the pool is a lot smaller and um, it's easier for you to find traction. But the following things I want to tell you, I still think apply and I still think are relevant and I still think can get you um, some results. So there's a couple of things I want to mention that is super important to um, think about and yeah, bear in mind when you take this on and whether you're in the beginning phase um, of the journey or you're already a little bit into it but are struggling to um, you know find any get any traction or, f or get anywhere basically. Okay so the first thing I want to say is definitely always have a financial backup when um, if you can when you're not sure about the results that you're going to get. So for me, for example, um, I literally had a job during the day and for an entire year, um, I was kind of building my products on my shop. Um, I first opened a creative market shop. So um, I, I spent a year basically building my uh, platform on creative market, um, you know, designing products, um, putting them out there, finding my way around things, around that whole new industry. So in that year, because I had um, obviously a fallback, um, you know, I could kind of comfortably find my way um, without the initial fear of needing the money to, to actually make a living. So what that meant for me was I could figure out my style. Not that it only took me a year to find the style, but... Um, that's a discussion for another time, which I will definitely cover. Um, and so basically, I, in that year, I found the kind of products that I wanted to create, the kind of products that um, I was good at, um, the kind of products that, I, that customers started responding to. And I also figured out in that year who my customer base ultimately was. So initially, my first products were... I just I just looked at what else was selling well and I try to do you know the same thing which I don't recommend um, I don't recommend that because it's it's not you um, what, I, what I do recommend is looking at a, at a um, you know a, a, what do you call it a trend sorry I couldn't find the word looking at a trend and then translating it into how does it suit your you know take your style and then work your own magic into it don't just copy what's out there and just, um, you know, I'm, I'm being harsh now by saying regurgitate, but essentially that's what we're all doing if we're just going to copy what's out there, regurgitate, you know, the exact same product, but just, you know, you're the one who created it instead of the other person um, and hope that you're going to get sales. There's a big problem with that because then you are basically competing in, in, a, in a much wider pool. So you're... You, the main thing you need to think about your your edge is going to be being different, being unique, and definitely, definitely showing your own style and and developing your own style and developing your own voice. And and the sooner you can get to that point, I I really believe the sooner you're going to get traction. So I don't know what your um you know Bernie you ask I'm I'm not sure what your work looks like I don't you know I have no idea um, whether you've already found your style and that kind of stuff but that is going to be your number one thing to stand out um, from everybody else because that's the main thing. You need to you need to be found, you need to stand out um, in the sea of products that there are out there, right? So um, the other reason why that's a really good thing because it's more sustainable 
And the reason why I'm saying it's more sustainable, because you don't have to work so hard to get there because the stuff comes naturally. So if you are copying somebody else or copying another style or um, copying a trend that doesn't really fit you, it's going to be hard work because it doesn't come naturally to you. You're going to force it and, you know, believe it or not, customers really sense that. Um, so you need to find stuff and stick with it that really resonates with you, um, resonates with your style, stuff that, that you, you know you're good at. So if you, for example, I'll give you a quick example. If you're a watercolor artist and you see the trend out there is just flat vector work, don't spend time trying to copy that. It's, it's pointless because you are going to have to then teach yourself how to be a good vector artist. You're probably going to end up churning out like subsist, like really half baked um, products, you know, substandard stuff. Um, and yeah, it's going to just take you longer and you'll feel frustrated and you won't feel fulfilled and so on and so on and so on. So what you would do then is look at the angle. What is it about that, that um, trend that, that you can use? So is it maybe the palette? Is it maybe the type of icons that people are creating? Um, you know, is it the subject matter and so on? So there's, there, there could be something from that trend that you can use in your own work, or which I also recommend is that you completely ignore the trend. If it's not suiting you, don't follow it. There's no, you don't have to follow every trend that's out there. I mean, I certainly don't. Um, so you don't wanna be squeezing yourself into this like hole that really doesn't fit. Anyway, I might be going off on a tangent, but I'm hoping this info is going to help with that beginning phase. So you asked me how I coped. So the main thing that I did was financial stability through my other job. And I only really quit that job until I was absolutely 100% certain that I could make a living doing what I currently do now. Um, so as I said, it took me a year to get to that point. And... Um, yeah, the, the other thing to consider is like, it is hard work. It's it's hard work. Um, and I know you know that because I could read from your um, message. Um, but I would say the main thing you got to focus on is building your... It sounds, sounds cheesy. I, I wish there was a better way. Sorry, let me just turn that off. I, I wish there was a better way to say this. Um... But you've got to start thinking about uh, the main thing in that, in that phase is building your brand and, and building your presence. Because um, what happens is it, that if you start becoming recognized in a particular thing, um, then people will start gravitating towards you for that particular thing. So it's very important to understand who your target audience is and then create stuff that you know that they're going to want to buy. And then concentrate all your energy and heart and soul into developing your style, your brand, and then make products that really encompass all of that. Because then what starts happening is it, it's like a snowball. So people start, you know, coming to you because they know, for example, like, I don't know, for me, it's like cute bunnies initially, it was that. Um, you know, so they came to me for all that cuteness and they knew that each product that I created was gonna um, kind of deliver that kind of thing for them. So they always came back for that and they still do. and. And that's why it's important to know where you're taking your creative business because that's going to guide you in, in everything you do. And also it's going to guide you in what you should be spending your time on. Like if you're finding that, you know, social isn't really getting you much traction, maybe you should rather spend that extra two hours that you're spending on social every day or however long on, on finding your ideal customer and what they, um, you know, what they want. Maybe you should be spending it on research. Maybe you should be spending it on um, developing your skill, you know. Um, so be very, very aware and, and uh, conscious, should I say, um, of how you're spending your time in that beginning phase because you want to be using that phase to the best um you know, to the, 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 the biggest advantage, um, the beginning phase, because you are still finding out, I'm assuming, um, you know, where you stand in the market, what your whole point of the, you know, the, your creating is and so on and so on. Um, so yeah, I hope that helps somehow. And um, so just again, financial stability, if you can, if you can get that second job or have, keep that second job, 
it's it's number one because it just takes the edge off um, the desperation of of creating under fear. You know, if you if you're creating from a place of um, panic because you you haven't you know got your next paycheck um, and you haven't had that many sales from your product, you start actually creating out of a panic state and and that's not very helpful from a creative point of view. So yeah, financial stability is the key if you can and then the rest is all about your brand and developing your style and finding a way to stand out um yeah i hope that helps i'll see you guys next time